Hello, new yogi. This is one of the, the beginner series. So we will start very simple. Basically, what are we trying to do in yoga? And a few simple postures to get your body warmed up and to get into it and work a bit of, of what is movement on the mat. So for me anyway, yoga comes back to being in the present moment. So meditation is part of the yoga practice. What we do most is asana, which is the word for movement, postures. Um, so it is a way to help us see inwards and connect with our body right now, right here. Um, so when you think of it that way, you don't need to do all kinds of fancy postures. That's not the point. The point is just to feel yourself to be here and also to connect to your breath. So as long as you can breathe, you're doing it right. There's no judgment. There's no competition. There's no physical end goal. You just want to be here. So knowing that, we will start in a comfortable sitting position. You can use as many props as you want. I would recommend having two blocks. It can also be dictionaries, sturdy books, uh, a kind of sturdy water bottle, big cans. You can be very uh, uh, creative and find whatever you have at home. And when you sit, you want to make sure that your hips are higher than your knees. That just helps with comfort circulation. So you can find a cross-legged posture like so. Often keeping both feet down in front of the other can be more comfortable. You might also prefer having crossed ankles. Uh, my personal favorite is hero's pose where the shins are on the floor, knees pointing forward. And you can also have a second block for more height and more space. If you are inaccessible, you might also sit on a chair, lie down, or have your feet in front of you and maybe interlace your fingers around your legs to kind of find a, a bit more support or even around one leg with the knee to the side. So it's all about discovery and practice and seeing what works for you. So once you do find a comfortable posture, you might also lean onto the wall if you prefer. You'll softly let the hands uh, fall onto your lap. The hands can point, can face up or maybe face down. See what's comfortable right now. Release the shoulders. You can shake them out a little bit. Let go of any tension. Close your eyes or maybe just softly gaze down towards the floor. And as you do this, take the time to arrive. And today we are going to focus on the floor underneath us. So see if you can feel the floor under your body. What parts of the body are in contact with your mat or the earth or the support on which you're sitting? Can you notice textures? Is it hard or soft? Is it cold or warm? Can you notice the weight of your body onto the ground, the support? Perhaps notice how the ground is right there to hold you, to support you. From here, let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Fill up the belly and the rib cage. And exhale through the mouth. Soften the body. Two more times, 
Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Inhale deeply. And let it go through the mouth. Gently open the eyes. Welcome back. And bring your arms by your sides. Inhale to reach the arms up and overhead. And exhale, turn the palms down and circle the arms all the way back down. Again, following the breath. Inhaling, palms up, circle the arms to the sides and up to the sky. Exhale, palms down, circle all the way back down. One last time. Inhale, large circle, stretch the arms away from you. Exhale, lower them down slowly. All right. Let's remove the block if you have one and come to the top of your mat. So coming onto your hands and knees in a tabletop. So the wrists are directly under the shoulders, the knees are directly under the hips. So you're doing kind of a square or rectangle shape with the body. Should be very stable. If this is not uh, good for your wrists, you might come, on, on, come up onto your fingertips, maybe come onto your fists. If you have dumbbells, that can also be a good way to alleviate the flexion or maybe bring the hands a little bit more forward so the bend at the, at the wrists is a little bit less uh, intense. So you see what works for you. Maybe coming on to blocks might help you as well. It will bring a little bit less weight into the hands. Take the time to find what works. And once you're here, you will inhale for a cow spine. So the hips will reach up, the chest will reach forward, and the gaze will come forward. So you're arching the back, extending the back. And on your exhale, you'll round the spine into a calf spine. The chin comes into the chest, tailbone points down, and the back of the heart pushes up to the sky. So again, inhaling, lower the belly, open the chest, extend the spine, gaze forward. And exhale to round the spine in a calf, calf, calf spine, chin to the chest. Let's do that again, inhaling, shoulders pull back, lower the belly, and exhale, push into the earth and round the spine. Inhale, come back to the center, and you'll reach the right leg back, tucking the toes under. So you're just pushing the heel back and finding the energy through your leg. So can you find squeezing through the thigh, through the hip, and from there pushing back, pushing into the toes. You may stay here. If it feels comfortable, maybe float the right leg up, parallel to the earth. Keep your gaze down as much as you can. Feel your neck nice and long. And can you invite your core to work here so that your back stays neutral, as if you're lying down on your back. Let's take one more breath. And exhale, lower the knee down. Other leg, left leg extends back, tucking the toes under. Engage, squeezing around the bones of your left leg. So your glutes, your thighs, everything is engaged. And then you're pushing back, pushing into the toes, pushing the heel back. And again, you may stay here. Or you may float the leg, keeping all of that same engagement as you lift parallel to the mat. For three, keep the spine neutral, gazing down. Two, one, and lower down. You'll tuck the toes, reach the hips back. Anchor the hands down and finding a downward facing dog. So the knees will stay bent. 
and you'll lift the knees and push the hips up and back. So you might be here, depending on your shoulders, you're looking towards finding a line from the hips to the hands, but don't worry if you're not there yet. We're all where we are. Keep the head heavy. You can do little yes and no's with the head. The neck is relaxed. Keep the knees bent. That'll help the hips to float up. If your legs are straight, you might round through the spine and you don't want that. You want to invite a nice long spine. Pulling the sit bones up and bending the knees as much as you need for that to happen. Let's inhale to look forward and take little steps all the way to the front of the mat. Keep the knees bent as much as you need. Keep that space in your body. Let's inhale, come halfway up. Fingertips will come to the legs and you lengthen the spine. So the upper body is more or less parallel to the earth and you're reaching the heart forward and squeezing the shoulder blades into the back. And from here, we relax. So once again, coming into that forward fold, and bending the knees. Keep the knees bent. Engage your abdominals. So find that engagement and that lift at the belly. And from there, roll your spine all the way up. One third of we're at a time. Keep the head heavy up until you get to the top. Shoulders roll back and head lifts. You're now in Tadasana, which is mountain pose or simply a standing posture with your arms to your sides. So from here, you want to think of anchoring the feet down. That's your base. Your legs are strong and pushing down. Your abdominals are gently engaged so that you're not collapsing into your back, but you're gently pointing the tailbone down and keeping a neutral spine and pelvis. From here, you also want to avoid rolling forward like we do on the computer, but gently squeeze the shoulder blades in the back so that you have space both at the front and at the back of the shoulders. And with all that, you can imagine that there's a string pulling up from your head and finding nice length throughout the body. Chin about parallel to the earth and gaze is soft towards the front or to the floor or maybe even close your eyes if that feels comfortable. Even the fingertips are gently energized here pulling down towards the earth. All right, can you feel the floor underneath you? Just like when you were sitting, can you feel the texture under your feet, the temperature, the weight of your body held by the floor? If your eyes are closed, gently open them. And you'll inhale to float the arms up to the sky and exhale to fold all the way down. We're going through a simple sun salutation, which you will see in many vinyasa classes. On your inhale, you'll come halfway up. So pushing through the legs, knees can stay bent. Think of lengthening the spine forward. On your exhale, you'll bring your hands down. You can come onto your fingertips and your blocks are always there to help you. You can start by stepping the left foot back, finding like a lunge shape. And then you can bring your hands down and step the right foot back, finding a plank. From here, you can lower the knees and find a half plank. When you lower down to the floor, you want the elbows to point back. So try to keep the upper body in a straight line. So I don't want to see this or this. You want to engage and find, keep, keep that plank shape. And from here, you'll lower all the way down. Okay, that might have been hard, but practice makes perfect. And from here, you'll find a cobra, which is a heart opener or a back bend. You'll roll the shoulders back, so you want to engage the shoulder blades towards each other, so the back body is supporting you. Push the tops of the feet down, so the floor is pushing also to help you. And from there, lift the chest. You don't need to lift high, this is a baby cobra. So you're thinking of pulling the chest forward, keep squeezing into your back. Imagine you want to touch the elbows together. And just stay here a moment. Try to start feeling comfortable in this posture. 
Push the feet down, engage your glutes. And from here, push into your hands so you come onto your knees. Yeah, kind of like a push up. Tuck the toes and push the hips back towards your heels. This is like a child's pose with toes tucked. But we'll see that at some other point. And you'll come up back onto that tabletop shape. Keep the toes tucked, keep the knees bent, and lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Mm -hmm. Take a moment to get used to this one. Push the arms into the earth. Keep lifting the hips up with the knees bent. Inhale, look forward, keep the knees bent. And exhale, walk your way forward all the way to the front of the mat. All right, let's do that again. Inhaling to lengthen the spine. And exhale to release. With strong legs, this time you'll come all the way up. Think of your half lift, and from there, keeping the shape of that upper body to come all the way up to stand to lift the arms overhead. And exhale, bring the hands to the heart, which is called Samastitiki, and come back to your Tadasana, mountain pose. Let's practice that again. Inhale to lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale to fold all the way down. Keep the knees bent, inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale, fingertips down, and walk the right foot back, finding that lunge shape. Press the hands down, and slide the left foot back for plank, knees can lower. Okay, let's do that push-up part. So this is Chaturanga. The elbows point back, Keep the plank shape with the body and lower with control all the way down. Lower the tops of the feet to the floor. Roll the shoulders back, squeeze the shoulder blades, squeeze the elbows and float the heart, float the chest. So you might imagine using your legs here even to push down and help the upper body get lighter as you squeeze everything back. And from here, push into the hands, arm to the knees, tuck the toes, hips to the heels. Transfer back to tabletop and downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svalasana. Keep the knees bent, push through the arms, find traction throughout the spine. Look forward, keep the knees deeply bent, and walk your way all the way to the front. Inhale, halfway up, and exhale, fold. Let's come up again with strong legs, long spine, like if, you're, like if you're in the halfway lift, and come all the way up, inhale, arms overhead, exhale, hands to heart, samastiti. All right, let's move on. Inhale to lift the arms up. And exhale to fold all the way down. Bend the knees. Inhale, halfway up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, bring your fingertips down and step the left foot back, lower the left knee. Find your blocks, or whatever you have as elevation. And find this low lunge. Your right foot is anchoring down. You might keep the back toes tucked or the top of the foot to the floor. You see what's more comfortable right now for you. Your knee might feel more comfortable in one or the other. It'll depend on your, your own body. From here, you can come onto your fingertips as well if you want more space. And you can get the, keep the, the hips a little bit heavier. Stretch into the front of the hip. But you don't want to collapse too much in any posture, just to protect your joints and to actually find muscle strength. You're going to think of squeezing it in. So instead of collapsing and being kind of heavy and without energy, push into the front heel and imagine you're scissoring or squeezing the two hips 
towards each other. So that might invite a bit of burning through the legs. That's good. So from here, stretch the heart forward. And you'll find a half split. So keeping the feet where they are, you'll slide the hips back so that the front leg goes towards an extension. You can walk the blocks with the hands closer to your center. The front foot will be flexed. So you're engaging through the front of the leg. Maybe you keep a gentle bend in the knee or extend the leg completely. And you'll inhale to lengthen the spine again. We like nice neutral spines in yoga. And exhale to fold towards your leg. And if that's a little movement, that's great. You can remember what yoga is about as I discussed at the beginning of this video. So as long as you're breathing, you're practicing yoga. So wherever you are, notice your breath and stay conscious and mindful of how your body feels. Adjust according to what your body is telling you. Let's bend back into the front knee. Walk your hands forward. Find that squeezing of the hips towards each other again, pressing through the front foot. And from here, if you can, float the arms up to the sky. And a lunge. Keep squeezing the hips towards each other. Find that scissor strength. And from there, engage the core. So you're thinking of pointing the tailbone towards the floor. Push through the toes of the back foot. And think of lengthening through the sides of the body all the way up through the fingertips. Think of your breath here. Notice if you're working with balance and what muscles are helping you stabilize. There's a lot of work involved. And on your next exhale, lower the hands back down onto the blocks. Tuck those back toes, float the knee off the floor, and step the foot to the front of the mat. Let's inhale to come halfway up, lengthen the spine, and roll we'll directly to the other side. Right foot steps all the way back. You can bring the blocks closer and lower the back knee. Choose toes tucked or not, and start by collapsing. Notice what that feels like. Just collapse, let the pelvis be heavy. And from here, squeeze the hips towards each other. Find that scissor strength. Imagine you're even pulling the heel back towards your right knee and vice versa. Make sure your spine is neutral. Lengthening forward. And from here, transfer back to a half split. Front leg becomes Extended as much as you can. Front foot is flexed, so the toes point up. Using your blocks for space. Inhale to lengthen the spine. So think of reaching the sit bones back and the top of the head and the heart forward. And then maybe fold a little bit closer to the leg or not. As long as you have some sensation, you might feel the stretch of the back of the thigh and the hamstrings. And like in the lunge, keep finding that gentle squeezing of the legs towards each other. See if that's noticeable or not. And connect on the breath. All right, coming back forward, bend the front knee. Walk the blocks at the front of the mat. Squeeze the hips, find that stable base, stable legs. Push through the front feet as you float your arms all the way up. And settle here. Keep squeezing left heel to right knee. Point the tailbone down, engage your core. And lengthen through the side body all the way to the fingertips. Take a few breaths here, notice how this feels. And notice if there's any muscle that's working uh, for nothing. So you might be able to let go a bit of energy and still hold the posture 
with stability. Let's take one more inhale. And exhale, lower the hands down. Lift the back knee. And walk the right foot to the top of the mat. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, step both feet back, bring the hands to the floor and lower the knees down and come to sit. You can sit to the side and swing the legs forward. And we will bring the feet, the sole of the feet together. So here what happens often when you're sitting on the floor is that it's pretty hard to stay straight. You kind of tend to round the back. And we're looking for bringing the weight onto the front of the sit bones and having that gentle curve in the lower back, which is easier said than done. So you have a few options. You can use a block to sit on. You can also use a blanket. So you can grab any sort of blanket you have at home, fold it up, so it has a bit of height and the height will depend on how much you need um, elevation to help the back neutral. So you can use this kind of height, few, a few folds. And from here, you'll sit right on the edge of the, of the uh, blanket. Because if you're sitting in the center, it doesn't really change anything. At the edge, you find this help with uh, pivoting the pelvis. So even if you're finding just a normal sitting position, this also really helps because the front of the pelvis can lower down towards the earth and the back can lift, helping with that position of the pelvis to support a neutral back. Whereas when you're not like this, the back of the pelvis will lower down, which creates a rounding a C-shape. So take your time to find the height that works for you. And from here, you'll find that diamond shape. So feet together. Find that gentle curve in the lower back. Finding a nice long spine. And the hands can come onto the feet or onto the knees. See what works for you. If none are accessible, that's also fine. You can bring your hands behind you and help you lengthen the spine, inhale. And then exhale, maybe hinge forward a little bit. Notice how that feels. And you can press the feet towards each other a little bit more. Find a bit more energy through the legs and maybe bring the hands to the feet if that's accessible. The gaze can come down, maybe even close your eyes. And just invite the either gentle or intense sensation in the legs. One thing you want to make sure of is that the breath is still easy. So if the stretch is so much that breathing becomes hard, I want you to back off and find a posture that is sustainable, that you can stay in comfortably. And if the hands are on the feet, you're welcome to give yourself a little massage. You can always give ourselves a bit of self-love and compassion and our feet do a lot for us and they can, in my opinion, always deserve a bit of, a bit of a tender love and care. So take a few moments here in silence, noticing your breath and the sensations in your body.
you'll gently come up to sit. Bring your hands on the outer edges of the knees, on the outside of the legs, and invite the legs back together softly and gently. And we will come to lie down onto our backs. You can come to sit at the center of the mat, keep the knees bent, and just gently lay back. If it's a little bit colder at your house, this is a good time to put on socks and a sweater, or maybe even a blanket. And bring the feet about, about mat width apart, so on the either edge of the mat. Open the arms out by your sides, take some space, and lower both knees to the right. So we call this a windshield wiper. It's not really traditional yoga, but it feels really good on the hips. So both knees get heavy to the right. They won't necessarily touch the floor. And then bring the knees back to point up and lower both knees to the left. So letting the pelvis to roll with the weight of the legs and finding a gentle twist as well throughout the spine. And again, coming back to center, and drop both knees to the right. Center. And left. One last time each side. Center. And right. Center. And left. Coming back to center. Bring the feet about. Uh, hip width apart and invite the knees in towards the chest you can bring one hand on either knee if that's accessible and you can gently rock your body side to side so this invites perhaps a gentle massage on the upper glutes and lower back and it helps to relax the back of the body into the earth. And coming back to this attention to the floor underneath you. Can you notice which parts of the body now are touching the floor as you're moving side to side? What does it feel like? Slowly come back to center. Place the feet down to the floor one at a time. Bring the arms out by your side, so there's about, let's say, 45 degrees angle from your body to your arms. So it's not an exact thing, but just where the arms get comfortable and don't be shy to take space. Turn the palms up towards the ceiling. So you're inviting space at the front of the chest, at the front of the shoulders and the collarbones. You can keep your feet to the floor. It can help with your lower back if you have any lower back sensitivity or pain. If you're comfortable, you can extend the legs out onto the mat. Make sure nothing is uh, touching your feet. And let the feet be about mat width apart, so like the arms take up your space. Relaxing into Shavasana which is translated as corpse pose. It's our final relaxation posture where you want to invite as much as possible some stillness. And through stillness, the body can absorb and incorporate the movements and the practice you just did throughout your yoga practice. As you're laying down onto the earth, one last time, can you feel which parts of the body are in contact with it? From the heels, through the legs, the glutes. Your 
goes back. Your right arm, your right hand, the left arm, the left hand, the back of the head. Writing a few moments of silence here, where with every new exhale, maybe the body can soften a little bit more onto the support of the earth. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Let it go through the mouth. If you need a little bit more time laying down, if it's your practice, you can do that. If you're ready to come out, start wiggling the fingers and wiggling the toes. Waking up the body gently. Then you can invite movement through the wrists and the ankles. And reaching the arms up overhead, bring the legs closer together, stretch the whole length of the body as if you were just waking up from your night. Inhale and exhale, release. Bend both knees if they are not already bent. And roll onto your right or your left side, keeping the arm underneath you as a pillow for your head and placing the other top hand onto the floor in front of the chest. This is a fetus position. Knees are bent towards the chest and you're laying down on your side. It's a transition posture from corpse pose to sit. So it's as if you're reborn fetus. Pushing through that top hand. Gently make your way up to sit. If you can, keep your eyes closed or just softly gaze down through the floor. Finding a comfortable sitting position once again. You might find a block or a blanket. You won't stay too long just to close your practice today. Feel the sitting bones anchored onto your prop. Relax the shoulders once again, releasing any tension in the face. Notice the floor, the earth. to the heart, keeping your eyes closed if you can. And take a moment to look in, or listen in. So you may notice any sensations, feelings, state of mind that you're feeling or noticing now after this practice. And as yoga, as I said at the beginning, is about 
finding the present moment, being here now. If you can practice tuning in and noticing how you feel, you're practicing being present with yourself. That might not be obvious to start. It might feel a little bit intangible, unclear. But what we're doing is creating this space, this silence, this seat, where at some point you might notice something. through the nose, let it go through the mouth, thank yourself for showing up for yourself today, and I thank you for practicing with me, namaste, have a lovely day.